Hello everybody, my name is Mohana Sarek, and today we're going to explore what a right bundle branch block is. Under normal circumstances, depolarization proceeds from the AV node through the Hisbergishi system through the right and left bundles simultaneously to depolarize both ventricles. This generates a narrow QRS complex. As we discussed in a prior lecture, there's a small R and a deep S in lead V1, and a small Q, a large R in lead V6, with a transition from V1 to V6, where the R gets larger and the S wave gets smaller. When either one of the right bundle branches gets blocked, the right bundle or the left bundle, this changes the normal QRS complex. What happens if the right bundle gets blocked? Well, depolarization will proceed normally down the left bundle. And because the left bundle inserts his Purkinje fibers into the septum, septal depolarization will still proceed left to right, like it does under normal circumstances. So in lead V1, you still get a small R wave, and in lead V6, you still get a small Q wave. After that, depolarization of the left ventricle proceeds as per normal, because the left ventricle is still depolarizing through the his Purkinje system via the left bundle. So you'll get a normal S wave in lead V1 and a normal R wave in lead V6. This is where things start to change now. Because the right bundle branch is blocked, depolarization of the right ventricle does not occur through the his Purkinje system anymore. Rather, it occurs through slow myocyte to myocyte muscle conduction which will lead to a delayed vector of depolarization from left to right. And even though there is some depolarization going the opposite way in the, in the basal aspect of the left ventricle, the slow conduction through the right ventricle produces a larger vector of depolarization. This creates a large broad R' prime in lead V1 and a large broad S wave in lead V6. And overall, a wider QRS complex. This is a typical right bundle branch block ECG. Here in lead V1, you see an R, S, R prime complex, where there is a small R, an S wave, and a large broad R prime generated by slow depolarization of the right ventricle. And in V6, you see a terminal broad S wave, also generated by slow depolarization of the right ventricle. So here's the criteria for right bundle branch block. The QRS duration is more than 120 milliseconds, which is three small squares. In V1, you have an R, S, R prime complex, in V6, you have a broad S wave, which is more than or equal to one small square. And because depolarization of the right ventricle is happening through muscle tissue rather than through his Purkinje system, repolarization creates an abnormal T wave. And it's common to see an inverted T wave in leads V1 and V2. Of note, because the major vectors of depolarization are still determined by the left ventricle, the axis remains normal, which is between minus 30 and plus 90 degrees. And we see that because lead 1 and lead 2 are still positive. So here's the right bundle branch block in lead V1 and V6. As you can see, there's an RS R prime complex in lead V1. And usually the second R prime is larger than the initial R in lead V1 because the latter R prime comes from slow right ventricular depolarization, giving it a larger, wider appearance. And in lead V6, we see a broad S wave. Now, at times, people refer to rabbit ears in V1. This is looking at the R and R prime in V1 that look like our rabbit ears. But keep in mind, the left ear is usually bigger than the right ear. What causes right bundle branch block? There are multiple causes. It could be an incidental or benign finding because of idiopathic fibrosis or scarring of the conduction system. And in these cases, even though it's found, it doesn't necessarily carry any negative prognostic implications. It could be because of aberrant conduction, meaning functional block. All that means is if signals coming down the AV node very quickly because of an arrhythmia, for example, the right bundle has a tendency to be refractory before the left bundle, which may cause right bundle branch block simply because of the rate. And if the heart rate was to slow down or the arrhythmia reset, it could reverse back to normal conduction. We will discuss functional blocks in a future lecture in more detail. Right bundle branch block in the setting of chest pain can signal acute left anterior descending artery occlusion. Acute pulmonary embolism can also cause right bundle branch block, and congenital heart disease or cardiac surgery can also cause right bundle branch block. This is a slide to give you a mnemonic to remember how the QRS complexes look like in left bundle branch block and right bundle branch block. In left bundle branch block, which we discuss in a separate video, V1 looks like a W and V6 looks like an M. In right bundle branch block, V1 looks like an M and V6 looks like a W. And the mnemonic is William Merrow, where the first letter indicates V1, the last letter indicates V6, and the L in William refers to left bundle branch block, and the right in Merrow refers to right bundle branch block. 
The other way to remember is right bundle branch block gives you rabbit ears in lead V1. So in summary, in patients with right bundle branch block, there is normal depolarization of the left bundle, which leads to normal depolarization of the septum from left to right, and normal depolarization of the left ventricle. However, there is slow depolarization of the right ventricle, leading to a large broad R' in V1, with a QRS complex of more than 120 milliseconds, which is more than three small squares. I hope that was useful. Thank you very much.